Jackson here on KDUR Durango. My name is Brian Liggett, and we're going to spend today's program with musician Elle Carpenter celebrating her newest release this Sunday. That's the 24th of May, 4.30 p.m. at Ska Brewing. Elle's new CD, Life Just Happens to You, out now. Elle's going to join us in the studio in just a few minutes to talk about the CD and other things and, of course, play a song. But why don't we kick things off with some music? The title track off of Life Just Happens to You is what we are going to hear. L. Carpenter on today's music lesson. She had a hard way to go and she knew it wouldn't be easy. Riding down the road to a new life to keep her busy. When her better half a life thinking he'd be better off, it was her and the kids who paid the cost for his foolish choices. A wandering night always stays in love. He worked a 40-hour week, 50 weeks out of every year. And he only called in sick two times in 30 years. And today he got a big slip with his gold watch to let him know loyalty didn't mean much. But they thanked him for his service. It was a hell of a are joined in the studio by L Carpenter celebrating the release of her newest record uh this Sunday at Ska that's May 24th and uh the record life just happens to you out today L hey thanks for being on KDUR hey Brian thanks for having me let me let's start here our friendship 
our relationship now probably goes back, a, wow, a year at least. Uh, it was all like email based where you were playing a show here, you wanted to come up here, things weren't working out. I just said, just keep prodding and bugging me, yada, yada, yada. And now here we are finally and coincidentally uh, on the same day that your record has come out. So glad this has finally happened and you've made it into the studio. Yes, me too. <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, and we'll celebrate the release of your record. Uh, like I said, this Sunday, uh, that's May twenty fourth, outside at Ska. What time? I did not write that down. Four p.m. Five p.m. It's going to be four thirty to six thirty p.m. Four thirty to six thirty. So the first hour, I'll I'll celebrate previous albums. I'll do kind of a mixture of songs, and sure. then in the second hour, I will have two local artists. Uh, backing me up on oh. fiddle and backup vocals. Oh, good. And uh, we'll celebrate this album. Who are those local artists playing with you? Um, Caitlin Cannon oh, yes. is going to be singing with me, yeah. and uh, her fiddle player, Alyssa, will yeah. be joining me as well. Caitlin has been a, a guest on this very program at least two or three times. So uh, She's a great girl. Yeah, glad that you know Caitlin, and, uh, and, and glad that you're here now making Durango your home. So... Give us the two-bit history on you, Ellen. What, how you ended up here in Durango? Well, <laughs> I originally grew up in Vermont, and I grew up on the folk circuit yeah. in general, um, singing mostly a cappella, five-part harmonies with my family, yeah. big family. Um, half of my family grew up in Farmington, New Mexico, so um, starting as a teenager, I, I made visits out here, and I, you know, I've, I've liked Durango for a long time, and I actually moved to Los Angeles eight years ago yeah. for because I'm an actor as well, so yeah. I was doing music and acting, and uh, recently, um, I really wanted a smaller town vibe, so, yeah. you know, coming here just made sense, I love it, it's a city with a small town vibe, Sure. and uh, I'm really happy here so far. And similarities between here and Vermont, I'm sure, although... Uh, Probably not nearly as cold uh, here, which is a good thing. <laughs> which is a good thing. But then, okay, so you're so you moved to LA. You're you've kind of got like this budding music thing going on, and and you're making records. This is what this is your fourth record. Fifth? Yes, your fifth record. You know, you, you you're do, trying to do the acting thing, and then it's just like forget it. I'm done. I can't. I don't want to be in LA anymore. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I'm done living there as my home. Yeah, I've been back there five times since okay. I moved here for yeah. work. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a 12 hour drive. I'm close. And honestly, when I'm not working, I don't want to be there. So yeah. it's like, I'm willing to go back. It's just not my home. And yeah. I, you know, once I get a little older and I want to raise kids, I do not want to raise kids in LA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Understood. Uh, yeah. I have a child here and this is the perfect place uh, to raise her. Uh, let's talk about the record that, uh, that just dropped today. Uh, was that recorded in LA? Yes, it was. Um, we recorded it at a good friend of mine and excellent producer uh, has a studio. We actually recorded the album at his house okay. for a more intimate vibe. Sure. Wooden, you know, like you get great acoustics in there. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it was a, it was a really nice low key vibe. This album started uh, with wanting an unplugged project. Yeah. So I've been touring solo. I wanted an album that sounds like me live. Yeah. And uh, we started with one song last year, uh, Pete Seeger Died. I did a cover uh -huh. of Where Have All the Flowers Gone, because yeah. that was a childhood favorite of mine. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was just a, a first, first thing we did there. And then it turned into an idea, which blossomed. And when I was in L.A. for NAMM, we ended up recording a few more songs. I decided to raise a crowdfunding campaign. I sure. raised the money, and then I went back out there, and we knocked it out. Yeah. And we got it done, and we... We used some great musicians. We got a fiddle player, some basic percussion, some upright bass and mandolin, and you know all my favorite unplugged instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it still has an unplugged vibe, and it ended up being polished as well. Yeah, yeah. You know. Now, when uh, your crowdfunding thing, what was your goal? What was your? So you said that's kind of like a Kickstarter thing. So, yeah, I so did Kickstarter. Oh, okay, okay. So that's it was a it was a straight up Kickstarter thing. Okay. It was. Yeah. Um, how long did it take you to make your goal? Uh, well, I, how long was my campaign? I think it was a 40, 40 day campaign, yeah. something like that. And I had it raised before it was over. Okay, good. So I actually, I raised 128%. Oh, so that was oh, awesome. Wow. Oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. And now does Kickstarter set like the, uh, 
you provide the financial goal and then who says you have this long to raise that money through the campaign? Is so it you have you? a few different options. Okay. They give you options. You choose what you think will be most effective yeah. for your project. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think, I think it went really well. I've used it in the past and... Um, I think this was one of the most effective crowdfunding projects I've done. Yeah. I gave a minimum. Yeah, okay, okay. And um, we were prepared for it to be me alone with my guitar and sure. vocals, and it would have sounded amazing. Yeah. You yeah. know? And because we raised a little more, we had a budget to make it sound even more amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it was a bonus on top of what it could have been. So then, you know, oh, we've got a little bit extra money to spend. Uh, I know this person that plays the fiddle. Let's bring this person in and add some just more musical layers to this project. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and here we are. Um, now, how is this record different from some of the stuff you've done in the past? You know, from what I've listened to and the cut we heard at the beginning of the show, uh, Americana music, I guess you could throw it in there. My opinion, I've been a songwriter since I was 19. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I had aspirations before that. I consider myself to have become a serious songwriter when I was 19. Yeah. And my experience with songwriting is that I don't want to limit myself to one genre. Yeah. And some of my past albums truly reflect that. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people wanted to tell me what to do in L.A. and said, pick a sound and, and you know, stick with it and don't change it up. And I didn't want to do that. Good. And I think that because I didn't do that in the past, you'll hear rock and roll, you'll hear pop in the past, you'll hear... Folk, you'll hear sure. Americana, you'll hear a little bit of everything. Yeah. I even rapped on one album. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, on the second album, With Open Hands, With Open Hands yeah. is a song that is actually a rap song with yeah. the rock chorus. So, And it's a very meaningful song. The lyrics meant a lot to me at the time and yeah. still do. And So, you know, different forms of expression, and I didn't want to limit myself. And so the funny thing about this album is that it brings me closer to home. I mean, yeah. I grew up with this stuff. I yeah. grew up listening to uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary, sure. and John Denver, and Joan Baez, and Joni Mitchell, all those guys on vinyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, we grew up going to folk festivals and singing with singing groups. And yeah. um, so this album is probably the closest to what I grew up singing. Yeah, yeah. So it means a lot to me. That's the... Uh, I, I was thinking, because when you mentioned Pete Seeger, uh, and when we're children, you know, we kind of absorb the music that our parents have listened to, you know, and my parents did not own that many records, but uh, they did own Peter, Paul, and Mary. They mm -hmm. owned uh, the Mamas and the Papas. Uh, there might have been a Joan Baez record in there, I'm not sure. So uh, just when you said growing up and singing these songs with, with your parents, like, we kind of all have that I idea of... Uh, like when you, where have all the flowers gone? Yeah, that's a song I've known forever. Why? I don't know. Because it was played in my parents' house. <laughs> I guess the Beatles also <laughs> is something that we would all fall back to. So, well, yeah. cool. You have a guitar in your hands. Play us a song. For sure. I'm going to play you uh, a song called Afraid of Love. This is track four on the album. And this song, when I was on tour last summer, was an absolute favorite of fans. And so... Um, I think I think possibly because the message is a healthy message yeah. for people of all ages. Yeah. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, track four, Afraid of Love, and um, here it is. I'm afraid to fall asleep. I'm afraid I won't wake up. And I'm afraid of love I'm afraid that things will change I'm afraid they'll stay the same And I'm afraid of love And if I opened up my 
trust a man I'm afraid to know I can And I'm afraid of love I'm afraid to have a kid I'm afraid of what I did And I'm afraid of you see that I'm too far gone and if I tell you the truth I'm afraid I'll feel that I'm worthless to you cause I'm afraid of love I'm afraid to make new friends I'm afraid I'll be alone in the end and I'm afraid of love I'm afraid of the dark and afraid when daylight starts to show and I'm afraid of Very nice joined in the studio by uh, Elle Carpenter this afternoon, who will be celebrating the release of her latest CD, Life Just Happens to You. That's coming up this Sunday, 4.30 p.m., uh, outside at the beautiful Ska Brewery in Bodo Park, uh, an all-ages event. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for being here. So what's going to happen now? The record is out today, the CD release party, and uh, then are you going to go tour the world? <laughs> I'm going to tour our beautiful country this year. Okay, good. good. So, um, where are you going to go? I'm going, uh, let's see. <laughs> First, I'm going to Texas, then Oklahoma, then uh, Kansas, and Nebraska, and Missouri, and, um, oh man, there's so many more. Yeah. I'm getting all over this year Tennessee, Indiana, uh, Kentucky. Is the tour all booked? right now or are you uh the, still just kind of coming along the tour is all booked through july yeah at which point i'm taking a break sure um and at that then, point you deserve a break <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> um and then i am going to continue in august the august part isn't entirely booked i have yeah. it outlined i have some shows booked and it'll come together. Yeah. Well, good. So now, then, what's going to happen after you tour this? Are, are you? I would imagine because uh, you have a handful of records under your belt. Uh, I mean, is is the writing thing something that's constantly happening? Like, are you already thinking ahead to the next record with the fact that this record came out today? You know, uh, with this album coming out today, I actually want to celebrate it for as long as I can. Sure. Um, in the past, my mind has automatically been on the next album yeah. once I release one yeah. and with this one as I said before it's so close to home and my heart that I you know that it's folk and Americana and yeah. a little even country yeah. in it 
um, that I want to celebrate it as long as I can. Yeah. And that doesn't mean I won't write songs. I actually, I have sessions set up in between show yeah. dates in Nashville and Missouri and, yeah. you know, maybe Virginia. Um, so I'll be writing, I'll be writing music. Um, and I guess when the next album comes along, it will. And for now, I really want to celebrate this one and just enjoy returning to home, yeah. returning to folk. Yeah. So it's like a nostalgia kind of trip for you, this record, like a trip down memory lane. And, you know, this, totally. is, this is the music that I that I grew up with. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, you know, Al, I think we're about out of time because we're going to go out right now with the Cut the Wrong Man. Tell me, uh, tell us a little bit about this song. And this is off the record. So this song, actually, um, this is a unique song on the album because it has a little bit of Irish influence to okay. it. Yeah. And um, I grew up listening to a lot of Irish music, yeah. so I think it's really cool that one of the songs on this album ended up in production, sure. sounding a little Irish. Yeah. Um, and the other reason it's a cool song is because I wrote it before I went on tour last summer, yeah. and it was another song that people came up to me and they said, which album is that song on? I want to buy it. Huh. So... Obviously, so I put it on this sales album. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, Elle, I appreciate you coming into KDR today, and uh, this has been great. And the CD release parties is coming Sunday, 4:30 p.m. at SCA. Uh, CDs will be for sale. They will. <laughs> yes. Your website, so people can go check out what's going on with you between now and Sunday. My website is www.ellecarpenter spelled the same as the Carpenters, without an S. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can find my album on your favorite online store. It's, it's available today on online, and yeah. then you can get it in person on Sunday. Excellent. Well, uh, Elle, thanks for uh, joining us today on KDR. Thanks so much, Brian. <laughs>
One more cut there from L. Carpenter. L's CD release party happening this Sunday, 4.30 p.m. at Ska Brewing, celebrating the release of Life Just Happens to You. Thank you, L, for joining us in the studio today, and thank you for listening. You've been tuned into your music lesson heard every Friday from 5.30 until right about now, right here on KBUR Durango. My name is Brian Liggett, encouraging you to support your local and live music scene wherever you may be. I'll be back next week with another music lesson. Thank you.